Hey everybody, it's John Stoffer, and I'm here to bring you a tech tip from MCAM Northwest. Today I want to talk about DWO, that's Dynamic Work Offsets. This can also be called DFO or Cycle 800, maybe even names that I'm not as familiar with. But the whole point of Dynamic Work Offsets is that it's a function that you can buy for your machine on a four or five axis machine. And what it allows you to do is set a zero somewhere other than the center of rotation. This is important because there's some cases where you might want to set it maybe up on the corner of a part, or maybe you don't have a great way to actually center your part on the table. And if you have to rotate to multiple rotary positions for this part, it can get kind of difficult to make sure everything's aligned. DWO makes it simple and easy to set up your machine and make sure that everything comes out uh, really nicely because it's tracking that position so well within the machine. It really reduces the amount of work for the operator and the programmer. So how do you take advantage of it? Well, first you need to purchase it for your machine and make sure that it gets enabled. Talk to your machine reseller for that. Next, you need to know how to program for it. And really it's deceptively simple. I'm going to show you an example in Mastercam so that you can get a good idea of how to approach this. Let's get started. So before we even get started with actually programming, the first thing we need to do is look at our post. DWO has to be supported by your post in order to be used correctly. So I'm in my post and what I'm going to do is try to find a line that uh, coincides with that. So I'm going to use control F in code expert and type in DWO and hit enter. I found something, but it's just a comment. I'll keep going. Here we go. Control supports DWO and this is currently set to no. Let's leave it here and move forward. I do want to point out that as far as how we're going to be looking at the post and modifying the post, uh, this can change quite a bit depending on who made your post and how that was meant to be set up. So do make sure to reach out to us if you have any questions about your post and we can help you directly or get you in touch with your post developer to figure out exactly how uh, your post can be modified to work with DWO. For now, uh, let's go ahead and move to Mastercam. So DWO is turned off. That means that while I'm programming, I need to be programming with my WCS set to the uh, rotary zero of the machine. So in this case, all of my toolpaths are set to a WCS of B0, C0 top. I have that plane set up here. If we take a look, we'll see that it's at the top of this face. Let's assume that that's the zero rotary position for this particular machine. So with that, if I take these operations and post them out, we'll take a look at the code. I'm going to call this one no DWO, and we'll take a look at the code. So we're starting out here uh, with all the pretty normal stuff. Tool change, it's gonna pull our offset, sp uh, spindle startup, B0, C0, and then we just kind of get right into it. Take a look at these values, X plus 1.5625, and my Z, after putting in my G43, I'm at 5.737. So I'm several inches above my zero. So this is standard center of rotation programming. Now let's take a look at what happens when we have DWO enabled and then how we change our programming method for using DWO. So first I'm gonna to go to the post and I'm going to change this to a yes in this case. Then go ahead and save. Once that's been changed, I'm gonna go back to Mastercam and I need to reload my post just to make sure that it pulls all that new information. So I go ahead and select my machine, read and check. That should reload it. Now I'm going to go ahead and post it. And I'm going to call this one with DWO. Now we're back into Simcoe. And as I take a look here, right after M10, I have a new piece of code in this line, G254. When I click on it, Simcoe tells me that this is my dynamic work offset for this machine. Awesome. So it did enable it correctly. Notice that my X and Z values are the same. This is because I did not move any of my planes. I kept them right where they were. That is the next trick. So let's go back to Mastercam. What we can now do is set our zero in a different location. On this view sheet, I can see a clear marker of where my zero is. I'm gonna follow this line and instead put it up here. This actually coincides with the corner of my stock which would be a much easier place for me to probe if I was taking a part and just kind of chucking it in the machine. As long as rotaries are aligned and everything's nice and flat, it's very easy for me to just probe the corner. 
So let's move everything there. I'm going to go to my planes and move this plane here. So I'm going to snag that, put it up here, and I'll go ahead and associate to new geometry, sure. Once I green check, my plane has been updated. Now these other planes are all linked, so I don't have to do anything with them, but really as long as they all have the same offset, we should be fine. So once that's been moved, our operations will go dirty. Because of the way that these are set up, I can just regenerate them. Now I'm going to take all of this and send it back out to post again. And I'm going to call this moved with DWL. So now that that's loaded, we take a look at the code. Again, we see our G254. But the next thing we notice is that the X position here and the Z position are different because we're now working from that new zero point. So it's really quite simple. All you need to do is make sure that you have that option enabled on your machine. Make sure that your post has support for DWO, and then you simply program the way that you would for even like a basic three axis part. If I was doing this in three axis, I'd probably set my zero a similar way. You kind of just go back to that mentality of setting it as you normally would for positional work and everything will just kind of work itself out. That's the beauty of DWO, why it makes it easier for programming and why it's better for setup. So I hope that video was helpful for you. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But really more importantly, we're here to help you with anything that you have in regards to Mastercam or production. If you have questions about Mastercam or what we can do to help you, please feel free to leave us a comment below. Or you can get hold of our sales team at 503-653-653. 5332. Thanks. Have a good day.